Our first speaker is uh, Steve DeCorte, and he is speaking on anonymous decentralized markets with no trusted third parties. Thanks. Hey everyone. Uh, so uh, this is uh, about bid markets and on a decentralized market. This work was done with uh, some friends of mine, Rich Collins, uh, Chris Robertson, and Adam Thorson. Uh, we worked on this for a good part of last year, and uh, this is the third talk we've been we've given on it. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a no fees, no middlemen, no altcoin market. Uh, we're not in this for for money. We just uh, trying to provide a solution to this problem that everybody can use. Uh, it's an open protocol, it's open source. It's been working since November. Um, we call it a beta, but we mean it's a real beta. It, it's an actually working beta. Uh, and it's been working since November of last year. Um, so you'll probably recognize this quote. Uh, I've been working on a new electronic cash system that's fully peer-to-peer -peer with no trusted third party. That's, those are the first words of uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. And with BitMarkets, we're trying to ask, can we do this for markets? Can we make a fully peer-to-peer -peer with no trusted third-party marketplace? Um, so the two problems you have to solve are the order book, um, which are traditionally centralized, how to decentralize that, and then how to deal with escrow, since you can't just trust a random anonymous person that you want to do a transaction with. The order book problem is the easiest to solve, um, or the most obvious. Uh, you just have all the users share an order book. They can post sales that they have, they can share them among themselves. We use the BitMessage network to do this for us using a public channel. Uh, it's all done over Tor, so it maintains anonymity or location hiding. Um, so that's, that's the easy part. Um, the escrow part is something new. Uh, there are Traditional centralized markets uh, use themselves as the escrow agent, and other decentralized markets use a marketplace of escrow agents to try to solve this problem. But you always have to worry, is the escrow agent actually the person who posted the sale? Uh, with anonymous identities, you never know that. Like, even if it's a very trusted agent, maybe they build up a lot of trust, and then they post some sales to take advantage of that trust, and they sign over all the transactions to themselves. So this is an idea to try to solve that problem without having to trust anybody. Uh, the idea is that the buyer puts up twice the price of the item and the seller puts up once the price of the item and uh, they lock these mutual deposits and the payment into a Bitcoin transaction with a two of two multi-signature. And uh, oh, I think I might need power. <laughs> Uh, but I can, I can continue to describe it while somebody hooks up power, if we, if we have it, or... Oh, you need power. I think it might need. All right. So, so the idea is uh, you lock this into a two of two, multi-sig, and, uh, and then both parties have a strong incentive to finish the transaction because neither can now profit from defrauding the other. If the seller doesn't send the item, um, the, uh, the buyer won't release their, their deposit, so the seller has no incentive not to send the item, otherwise they're going to lose the deposit. If they do send the item and, uh, and the buyer doesn't uh, sign the payment, then the buyer is going to lose their deposit, so they don't have any incentive to do that. They're going to lose the price of the item, and clearly they had enough incentive to set up the transaction in the first place, so they have enough incentive to release it. Like they could buy another item with that amount of money, so they have a strong incentive to, uh, to sign it over. So, yeah, this is just a diagram kind of showing that. Both sign the escrow, it's locked into a Bitcoin transaction. We get a lot of questions about where are these Bitcoins stored? Uh, and uh, you kind of need to understand how multi-sig works. These are locked in a Bitcoin transaction, so they're in the network but nobody can spend them until both agree how they're going to be released. And uh, you can sign a release transaction or you can sign a refund transaction. 
both parties have to decide which of those they're going to do. And uh, we think that using this system, uh, neither can profitably defraud the other. And uh, it, it seems pretty clear from that that any repeated bad actors are just going to go bankrupt very quickly. So on the long term, even if there are malicious actors at first, they're going to go bankrupt and you're only going to be left with the people who act in good faith. Here's a little chart to kind of make it, uh, I hope you can read it, to make it a little clearer that the only situation which either party can profit is if they both act in good faith. Um, I kind of already went, went through this, but uh, there's an asymmetry to who loses how much, depending on who defrauds the other. But uh, no matter who defrauds the other, you know, the defrauder is going to lose money too. Um, the sort of game theory behind this uh, is related to the ultimatum game. It's a psychological experiment uh, you may have heard of where they take two people who don't know each other. Uh, they set them down and they say, you can't talk to each other, but we're going to give one of you a big stack of money and you have to decide how to split it with the other person. And they get to decide whether they accept it. Uh, if they don't accept it, we take the money away from both of you. If they do accept it, you both get to keep it. And what they found when they carry out this experiment with people across different cultures is that for the most part, unless it's uh, roughly half and half, maybe like 40-60 split, the other person will punitively turn down the money, even if they don't know the other person, who could be just a, a stand-in for the experimenters. Right? This is free money, basically. They will punitively give up free money in order to uh, penalize the other person for acting in a way they consider unfair. So our system kind of relies on the results of that experiment that uh, people will act punitively and uh, as long as they're willing to do that, it'll keep everybody honest. So this is what the user interface looks like. Um, this is the, the Bitcoin wallet for it. Right now it's just running on OS X. Uh, we're working on porting it, the same code base using GNU Step to Windows and Linux and hope to have that done uh, later this year. Uh, this is what browsing posts look, looks like. Uh, it's pretty easy to go down into a category you choose, which uh, geographical reason, region you're in. We basically divide them by where you can mail something without having to worry about it going through customs. Um, and, uh, and then different categories and subcategories. And you can post items, describe them, include a, a single photo of them at the moment, and uh, browse the ones that you find. Because it uses BitMessage, it takes a little while. You have to like run the app for a while and sync with the BitMessage network to see the items. Um, that usually takes like an hour uh, the first time around, but after that it's faster. Uh, this is what it looks like to post a sale and to follow it through the different, the different stages. It's hard to read it on the screen, but these different sections here are whether it's listed, whether you receive bids, the, uh, whether the escrow is locked. Uh, the dispatch section of that asks you for uh, or asks the, the buyer for an address, which gets sent over a bid message to the seller. And when the seller uh, sends that, they wait to see the, uh, the buyer has requested a refund or a payment, and uh, they can accept that when it's complete. Okay, so the, the goal of all this is to create the possibility of doing transactions in a new kind of way, in a way that doesn't involve the typical systems for, for creating trust, which are, which are courts, people with guns you know, that show up and say, you, you, were, you defrauded this other person and we're going to set this straight. Maybe they are on the right side of that, maybe they're on the wrong side of that, who knows? But, uh, but with this system we hope you can do a whole set of transactions, maybe not all transactions, but maybe a, a large set of transactions that would normally be done without any of those traditional mechanisms, uh, a voluntary economy. Um, so the app, the source, the white paper, the protocol spec are all available and uh, we would welcome any contributors or users uh, and I welcome your questions.
So the question was, uh, what are the differences with OpenBazaar? Uh, the main one that we see is that OpenBazaar uses a marketplace of escrow agents, or at least that's one of the models um, that they're proposing. Ours doesn't have any escrow agents, it's all two-party escrow. Um, there are some other ones about how they implement their transport network, their messaging network. We use, we just build on something that already existed with message and that we trusted. I think they implement their own, I'm not an, an expert, but it sounded like they implemented their own and it required some things like you have an always running server and theirs was sort of store in, oriented. Ours is more uh, like an eBay or Craigslist oriented where you post individual items instead of having a store. Um, they, uh, because of the escrow agent situation, they need a trust network. Um, and so they, there's, there's probably quite a bit of complexity around that. Ours eliminates all that. Uh, there are types of transactions where you're going to need trust networks in the future. Uh, things like ride sharing services where you have to trust your personal safety to somebody, things like that. But for the markets that we're aiming for, delivered items over the mail, we're hoping that uh, two-party escrow solves the problem without the need for reputation systems or escrow agents. Right, since it's between two parties, there's no fees at all. There's no middleman, nobody takes a cut, nobody has a power. Like, I mean, besides the fees and besides the trust problem, uh, a big problem with escrow agents is that they have no way to fairly resolve a dispute. Uh, if a dispute arises and they didn't intercept the package on the way, all they've got is one person's word against another. How do they resolve that? I don't see any fair way for them to do that. Um, so this solves that problem as well as eliminating fees. So you mentioned the ultimatum game as like one of the bases for um, you know, justifying this escrow model. Um, but in that game, the parties should be able to communicate to each other, right? That's but, right. Uh, how do you prevent people from communicating with each other? Uh, so the question was, uh, with the ultimatum game, the parties can't communicate, and how do we enforce that constraint? Uh, in our system, we don't have any chat. There's no, you can see a Bitcoin identity or a bit message uh, identity, but uh, there's no, we don't provide any sort of interface to send them messages. All you see is they've, accept, you know, they've accepted a bid, uh, they sent the address. I mean, the one, the one hole there is that an address gets shared. So they could poten potentially send a physical letter saying, hey, download this program, sign over this thing. But again, there's, uh, there's plausible deniability that that's the actual address associated with the person. And, uh, so it's just the physical address that you show? There's no like, other... Uh, we show a bit message address, but... You send a bit message on a you, you could send a bit message, but our client doesn't provide any way of viewing those messages. It just ignores anything that it sees that isn't a structured uh, JSON format that it expects for the different parts of this transaction. So it just deletes those. Right. So if they sent that, the only way they have to send that was over physical mail, and that would be from the seller to the buyer. Or through BitMessage. Well, we don't provide any way for them to, to do that. They would have to like set up another BitMessage client, extract the the key pairs from our client, and then you know it would be an involved process basically. Uh, and the other side like would have to explicitly do that in order to be able to receive messages. From scammers asking them to be scammed, you know. So it, right. So that's that's the situation you have to worry about. They can send the physical letter from the seller to the buyer, uh, but here we rely on the ultimatum game of like, oh, the person wants to scam you. As long as this is an amount that isn't burdensome for you to lose, if it's uh, the ultimatum game, found that people will, up to a month's salary, people would be willing to lose it to punish a bad what they saw as a bad actor. So as long as it's not above that amount, then even if you received it in the physical mail, the results of this experiment suggest that you would just punitively not sign a, uh, a payment. Uh, on the
the right. So that was a uh, sort of a comment more than a yeah. question. Okay. Uh, How long until you think this process is going to be real? Or perhaps make obsolete things like small things, sports, civil lawsuits. That's where I've been visioning all of it going. I was wondering if you felt it's the same. I don't know how to predict that. Uh, I've actually been surprised that we've had this working since November and no one seems to be interested so far. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, this is actually really awkward for me to give presentations. I'm a developer, not a marketing person. And I kind of, after months of no one being interested, thought, oh, maybe my time would be better spent telling people about it than it would be spent working on it. So that's kind of why I'm here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I'm really glad to see so many people seem to be interested in it. Um, so, so far I've been surprised, uh, and uh, I don't think I'm good at making predictions about that. But that's what we'd like to see. Yeah, our, like one of the big problems we've had is just explaining this idea that this can solve the problem without a third party uh, escrow agent. People are kind of used to that, like all markets up to this point have always used a third party, whether it's the marketplace itself or other parties, they've, or being able to you know, appeal to the courts or something and having a signed document. It's a new idea and it's really hard to kind of communicate it. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> you know, we're still trying to figure that out. Um, and yeah, welcome your suggestions, anybody's suggestions on how to do that. Uh, John? Do you think there might be uh, mental hurdles for people because there's actually a cost to buying things? Like, when I buy something off of eBay, I pay once, but with this system, I pay double. Right. Uh, so the, yeah, the question is whether the, the buyer having to put up twice the amount is, is one of the problems. Uh, it seems reasonable that that might be. Um, until, until it's like really clear that what you're buying with, being, with putting up twice the price is the guarantee that no one can profitably defraud you, which is really valuable. Uh, and as well as the fact that the seller has to put up a deposit, uh, and that gives them a strong incentive to get the item out the door as quickly as possible. Like with a lot of Kickstarters, you kind of wonder, eh, are they just holding my money and earning interest on it? Or, you know, uh, or with any, any, any company you order something from, they can kind of make, a, if it's significant enough amount of money, they can make money just on the float of like waiting to manufacture and send out the item. With this, you have an incentive they have an incentive to send it out as quickly as possible. So you're buying that as well with the extra price, but but yeah, yeah, that might be a problem too. Uh, uh, so you said you've not seen much interest in straight away. How, how many transactions or how many posts you see? Are we back none? Or? Uh, there, when we first put it out, there were a handful of, of uh, posts like from Europe uh, that were like cell phones and little computers and things like that. Uh, there was one guy in the UK that I think was selling cigarettes. Um, and that was about it. And we haven't seen much since then. Uh, I have a couple posts on there myself of things I actually want to sell, like things that I would sell on Craigslist, but the market is too small locally. Um, so yeah, that's, that's about all we've seen so far. Um, thanks so much. Uh, 
yeah, well, we talked about this in the white paper. We wanted to use a number that uh, seemed like it was very clear that incentives would be aligned in pretty much any case, and it would, yeah, that would be symmetric. And we kind of lay down our criteria of like, all we really want to do is make sure that bad actors go bankrupt, because that criteria will ensure that the marketplace in the long term is healthy. Uh, and this seemed to be the simplest choice to achieve that, uh, because maybe our biggest problem at first is just explaining the idea. And the, simple, the simpler we make it, the better, maybe. <laughs> so that was kind of part of the reasoning. The earlier slides mentioned about the good faith Uh, so, the, yeah, the question is how do we define good faith? Uh, in this case, it's kind of defined by however the buyer sees it. Uh, so if the, if the seller posts a description of an item and the, uh, the buyer receives the item, then it's kind of up to the buyer to decide whether what they got fit their expectations based on the description and decide whether they think it's fair to make a payment or not. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of up to them. Uh, we hope that that's enough to, to achieve a healthy market. Um, and that if it isn't, that the market would kind of work that out. Buyers would, or sellers would make better descriptions of the item that are more accurate. You know, these kinds of things would, would happen naturally. Is there anything in the marketplace to handle reviews? Does UK guys say reds really are great or they really suck? Um, so, yeah, the question is, do we have any kind of reviews? Uh, no, we don't have anything like that yet. Um, yeah, our hope is just that the escrow system itself solves that problem. Um, there, are, there, are a couple, there are a whole bunch of tricky issues about reputation systems, especially in an anonymous marketplace, like how they can, they can reveal who bought an item, which maybe they don't want revealed. Um, they can re reveal the extent of the sales that a seller made, which maybe they don't want revealed. Um, so it's really tricky when you start to do things like reviews, and our hope is that we can avoid all that tricky stuff, all those potential complications with the escrow system. That alone will be enough to, um, to guarantee uh, you know, good faith actions. The one thing they can do is if you, when you look at each post, you can see the uh, the bid message address for the seller. So you could look for that same address and eventually we might add a feature so you can like favorite an address or something like that. And that would start to, to kind of be like, like that, at least for your own uh, recording of, of good transactions. Oh, uh, John. Um, have, you, have you thought about adding support for color coins so, so people could use maybe like Yeah, so the question is, have we considered some kind of colored coin uh, that maybe has a trusted third party that redeems it for fiat? Uh, yeah, just, just support for some colored coin protocol. Right. Um, yeah, one of the problems is that we do all of our prices in Bitcoin, which is which can be a little volatile. Um, but our thought is kind of just to resolve that by letting sellers not accept the post if the price, you know, change too much in the wrong direction and repost with another price. Uh, and we have a feature to remove a post. Uh, so the seller can send a message saying, this this post isn't active anymore. Um, well, there's the transit period too. So like, you know, it could be a week before the seller sends the item and they actually get their payment. That's true. Uh, one thing that would distort the escrow system is if there were vast changes in prices, like you know, a double, a, more than a doubling in, in price could change whether their incentives are still aligned with their deposits. Um, so yeah, that's a problem we don't, we don't really have a solution for. Uh, hopefully it, it's not a big problem. Uh, whether like an altcoin or something could solve that, I'm not sure. Uh, so far, we haven't seen anything, any, any altcoins that would really, or colored coins that would offer that. And they would all introduce some kind of trusted third party, which is a, it's a risk as well. Thank you.